Hello, today's geography is all about Europe. It will also help with your reading comprehension this week. I'm going to start off by outlining what your task could be, because you get a choice today. As we go through the PowerPoint, you might get some more ideas on what you'd like to do. So first of all, choose an aspect of Europe to research. So it's a research project today. And send the research to me to add to a class information booklet. You can type, draw or write the research in any way you like. Pictures or presentations can be emailed or sent to me via Class Dojo. And some of the ideas that you could research are flags, countries, rivers, mountains, landmarks, lakes or the weather slash climate. So it's completely up to you what aspect of Europe you research and it's up to you how you present that information to me. As we go along, I'll give a few ideas that might spark some interest. So here's our introduction to Europe. Europe is one of the seven continents. The other six are North America, South America, Africa, Asia, Australasia and Antarctica. On the picture, you can see them all. Europe is the second smallest continent in size. If you look at the picture again, Europe is in a sort of reddy pink colour. I think the only smaller one is Australasia. There are around 50 countries in Europe, including England, France, Croatia and part of Russia. Not all of Russia is in Europe. Russia is an enormous country and it spans both Europe and Asia. Seven hundred and forty three million people are thought to live in Europe, making it the third largest continent by population. So so far the information is telling us that it's a small continent, but it has quite a large population, which means that people must live closer together in Europe than they do in some of the other continents. Most countries use the euro as their currency. If you've been on holiday in Europe, you'll probably notice that more than one country uses the euro. In England, we use sterling pounds. There are lots of religions across Europe, and most practiced, sorry, the most practiced being Christianity. There are some fantastic religious buildings all over Europe, and many of them are beautiful churches and cathedrals. Some flags of Europe. These aren't all 50 countries' flags, but here are some of the flags. You might want to do a research project on all of the flags where you can colour and design them. See how many you can learn. You could even make a pairing game. And here's a map of Europe. Over here is part of Russia. Again, there aren't all of the countries on here. Scotland, England, Wales, Northern Ireland, Southern Ireland is where we're positioned in, the, in Europe. So the Scandinavian countries, Eastern European countries, and the famously shaped Italian boot. One of the things that you might choose to research are rivers. Here's a little bit about the river Volga in Russia. The map shows eastern Russia, sorry, western Russia, which is where it joins to Europe. And shown is the river Volga. The Volga River runs through Russia. It is the longest river in Europe at 2,294 miles long. In places, the Volga is so wide that you cannot see the other side. Huge sturgeon fish can be found living in the water. One of the biggest battles of the Second World War was fought on the banks of the river. So that's a little bit about the river Volga in Russia, but you could choose a different river in Europe. It could be the River Thames, Danube, some of the rivers that flow through Venice. It's up to you. 
Here's another river, it's the River Rhine in Germany. The Rhine River runs mainly through Germany, but starts in Switzerland. Its waterways have been used to transport food and other goods since Roman times, over 2,000 years ago. There are many castles located on the banks, such as Mouse Castle. Many years ago, the Rhine was considered one of the most polluted rivers in Europe. A lot of effort has been put in place to clean it up. If you don't want to study rivers, you could think about mountains. Here's an example. Matterhorn in Switzerland. The Matterhorn is Switzerland's most famous mountain. It is easily recognised by its triangular shape. Its height is 4,478 metres, quite small for a mountain. Might be famous, but it's not very big. In German, Matt means meadow and Horn means peak. Since 1856, over 500 people have died trying to climb the mountain. In Disneyland, California, USA, there is a miniature copy with a bobsled ride inside. Here's another mountain, Mount Olympus in Greece. It is the highest mountain in Greece at 2,918 metres. In Greek mythology, it is the home of the god Zeus. You can usually see the mountain covered in snow for seven months every year between November and May. You might choose to research a different famous mountain in Europe. Alternatively, you could research famous landmarks. This is the Eiffel Tower in France. The Eiffel Tower is found in Paris, France. It was completed on the 20, oh, sorry, on the 31st of March 1889 and took two years, two months and five days to build. Until 1930, it was the tallest building in the world, being 821 metres tall. This is the same as an 81-storey building. Seven million tourists visited in 2013, making it the most visited paid monument in the world. There is a miniature copy of the tower of La in Las Vegas in the USA. Another famous landmark, this time in England, is Stonehenge. And if you've been to the south of England, you might have driven past it. The mysterious Stonehenge can be found in the English countryside in Wiltshire. People believe that the stones were erected around 5,000 years ago, but nobody is certain as to why. Every year, thousands of people visit Stonehenge on the 21st of June for the summer solstice. Some people look at it and think that perhaps it's for religious ceremonies, ancient ones, something to do with the sun, sorry, something to do with the sun and the way it shines through the different parts. So if you want to choose a famous landmark anywhere in Europe, find out more about it, draw it, plot it on a map, send it in for our class booklet. We might want to study the climate and weather. Here's the Stockholm in Sweden weather and climate. Stockholm is the capital of Sweden and is found in the north of Europe. The climate there is quite similar to that of the United Kingdom. On average in winter, the temperature is usually around minus one degree Celsius, whereas in the summer, the temperature is around 20 degrees Celsius. In winter, there is sunlight for only six hours every day, whereas in the, sum in the height of summer, the sun can be seen for 19 hours every day, meaning that night time only lasts for five hours. Climate and weather in Madrid, Spain. Madrid is the capital of Spain and is located in the middle of the country. When most people think of the climate in Spain, they think of warm weather and lots of sunshine. This is because many people only travel during summer to the warm beaches that are dotted around the country. In summer, the average temperature in Madrid is around 31 degrees Celsius, whereas in winter it can drop to 10 degrees. Madrid is a very dry city. It doesn't rain often. But when it does, some taxi drivers stop working due to the weather, much like when it starts snowing in the United Kingdom. So 
So that's the weather and climate aspect. If we go back to the beginning again, I can remind you of the tasks that you can choose from if you wish to. How you set it out is up to you. Nearly there. How you set it out is up to you. Just send it in via Class Dojo or email me. So you could do some more research on the flags, on countries, on the rivers, on mountains, on some landmarks, could even be lakes, or the weather or climate. It could be based on somewhere that you've been or somewhere that you'd like to go. Or it could be based on one of the things that you've seen already in this PowerPoint. 